Hi, this is Heidi Clark with the Essex Retorter. And we're here today at the Dark Room Gallery interviewing Leonora Dodge, who is running for Chittenden 23, Three. Mm -hmm. um, the new house district. Thank you for being here. Sure thing, yeah. I know you've been asked a lot of the same questions over and over. <laughs> um, and I'd like to try not to ask the same, but people want to know why you're running right? and what qualifies you. When I got the phone call from fellow delegates who know the job and who knew me and thought that it was going to be a good fit, um, they happened to call me about a day or two after the leak of the Scalia decision came out. and. Um, I think that's the reason that I immediately said, yes, I'll do it. Um, I think it was a wake-up call about the importance of um, civic action and participating in our democracy, um, the loss of our constitutional rights, um, and all of that happening just a couple of days before um, May 10th, which is Mexican Mother's Day, something that we celebrate in my household every year. Um, you know, just the, the, the very personal nature of those decisions about planning a family, um, having friends and, and family members who've, who have faced um, infertility or losing a pregnancy. Um, you know, the thought that government could interfere with such a, such a, deeply personal part of our existence was was really was really frightening to me and and really motivating at the same time what other issues at the state level are the yeah. most important to you yeah that, so we are at a really exciting time in that we are going to be making a lot of decisions with a lot of new money uh, especially regarding the climate and a move to modernize our state, um, bring it into the 21st century, and looking forward to the 22nd century, the 23rd century. So um, this new technology and um, the prospect of building that for our state and green initiatives. In addition, I, because I'm half Mexican, our nation is now almost at 20% of Latinos in our population, but I just read that we only have 1% of offices held by Latinos. So there's a massive disproportion in terms of representation, and I feel like we need to have a voice. I think that Latinos, I, I, there are many reasons why we don't participate at the political level, um, but I feel like I've always been um, fortunate to have parents that gave me the resources and the education to, to be proud and strong and to not forget where I'm from and to always create bridges. Vermont has an affordability crisis. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think we should do in terms of creating yeah, opportunities. I yeah, so I think that we have we have to deal with short-term crises as well as building for the long term to prevent more crises and to um, build structures. I think that our um, our dependence on um, fossil fuels is is uh, shooting ourselves in the foot. I think that we need to gain independence. I think that Vermonters have a long history of uh, valuing our independence and um, I think that the more locally produced and locally controlled and clean energy that we can that we can rely on the better so I think investing in that for the long run and helping people in the short run to make that transition as painlessly as possible is only going to help us and the other big one is health care, obviously. And, you know, um, I talked Thank you. That was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think that we, our legislature is doing a lot of important work in trying to um, patch the holes where, you know, these inequities exist, where people can't afford, even if you're insured, 
uh, you're still paying a lot for your health care. And, you know, I'll just repeat that it's not just a matter of are you insured, it's a matter of are we Can healthy. Can you afford your deductible? Well, and are we healthy, you know? And, and I just can't help thinking that we're, we're banging our heads against the wall trying to come up with a private a private healthcare system that's actually going to make us healthy. And it just seems like, let's try something new. Um, so many countries around the world that have a public system and then a small private market for additional insurances, you know. Um, I'm not saying let's cover everything. Um, but, you know, our country is not as healthy as other nations that spend almost half of what we spend, if not more. You know, um, we spend at least twice as much as other nations, and we are dying earlier. We are dying from preventable diseases. We don't have as many doctors um, per capita, and we see our doctors less often. And that's not the result that we want. You and Ray are campaigning together with um, Lori and Karen at a lot of events. Um, do you see yourselves as a group of four representing Essex, mm -hmm. or do you see yourself as being more in line with your constituents if that should differ from the majority? Everybody has their own fields of expertise and, um, and their vision, I think. Um, that we, you know, we, we will all be on various committees and that's where most of the legislative work really lies. Um, they probably won't put me and Ray together on the same committee, being that we're from the same district. Um, so I really look forward actually to relying on them for information about what's going on in the committees and the discussions and the issues that are coming up on different, on different topics. But I don't see, even if we wanted to work together at the legislature, we probably wouldn't be, you know, like going hand in hand um, through the process. What do you see as the differing needs between the urban and suburban Chittenden County with the rest of Vermont, which is primarily rural. Right. And how do you see that all working together? Yeah, so I think that, I think that um, one of the values of, um, you know, looking at, looking at our policies through, you know, an equity lens, as we, as we say, you know, like, it's not about everybody getting a chair or uh, you know, it's about the right chair, right? If you need one that rolls, or if you need one with arms so that you can get back up after, um, et cetera. If you need to be higher so that you can reach the table, et cetera. So I think that our rural and urban concerns are absolutely different, I agree. Um, and we need to take that into account, especially as we talk about, um, you know, our home heating moving forward, transportation, um, access to broadband and technology. I think that those are wildly different issues for urban dwellers versus rural dwellers. And um, I think that the reason that we love Vermont so much, my family and I, is precisely because we can walk out of our neighborhood and see horses and we can bike to Indian Brook and just feel like we're out in the woods. Um, but we can also go to the movies, we can go to concerts, we can um, get an education, you know, that's, that's one of the best in the state. Um, so I think that Vermont has, has uh, a well-deserved reputation as a state that is progressive-minded and values its rural nature. And I think that some of the challenges in development, we have to realize that we can't stay in like 1979. We have to develop more housing. Um, we have to streamline the permitting process in order for that to happen. Um, and I would say that one of the other big issues that has been um, 
you know, that, that, that we need to develop our solar, we need to develop, I think, wind, and I know that that's a controversial issue, but, you know, you're asking about, will I take a difficult stance? And I think for me, um, wind is an important uh, alternative fuel out there that, that you know, and, and solar, honestly, has been, um, uh, you know, discouraged to a great degree. Um, I think that our utilities will benefit from um, being open to to alternative fuels and just importing importing fuel when we are, let's face it, an aging state. A lot of people on fixed incomes. Um, we cannot be looking at the next five years having our seniors trying to live in unweatherized, you know, old housing stock that's unweatherized and that's heated with fossil fuels that, you know, have wildly, wildly um, volatile pricing. Thank you for being here with us today, Leonora. Thank you. Again, this is Heidi Clark with the Essex Retorter and a reminder to our viewers that Ray declined an interview um, and also that the questions were not given in advance.